Uh, this is section B of um, science paper 2, which is um, chemistry of uh, the year 2020. I think this is visible down right there. Um, so welcome to the second part of this revision. So question 1, B1, you've got that structure right there below and answer the questions that follow. So changes of state of matter, you've got A, B and C processes right there. So question A, uh, identify process A in figure B1.1A, A, process A. Look at the arrangement of particles, it's regular, this is a solid, this is a, a gas, this is a liquid, they're not regularly arranged. Direct change from solid to gas, that's sublimation, and the opposite is desublimation or deposition. My answer there is sublimation. So uh, question B, uh, I mean A2, uh, from table B1, Point one, identify two substances that can undergo sublimation, which is process A. Uh, iodine crystals sublimates, ammonium chloride sublimates, naphthalene sublimates, and uh, may, maybe many other substances. Oh, there have been substances here. Oh, okay. Uh, look at me. Look at me. So, substance aluminium oxide, uh, ammonium chloride, yes, sublimates, iodine crystals sublimates. Um, uh, question B, state whether process B and C are endothermic or exothermic. Explain your answer. Uh, let's look at C first of all. Uh, C is actually changed from liquid to solid, which is actually solidification or freezing. So C is so freezing or solidification. It is achieved via cooling. Thus, it's exothermic. Cooling is the removal of heat. Therefore, the water has to lose the heat for it to, uh, to freeze. So it's exothermic. B is endothermic. Let's check out B. B, um, water changing to gas. You have to boil water for that to happen. Okay, you have to heat it up for it to increase uh, in terms of rate. Uh, so B is um, uh, endothermic because particles have to gain energy for them to turn to gas. Okay, we've actually scored five marks from that part of this question. We move on to the uh, in the next part, we're having B2. Elena carried out an chromatography experiment to identify components of substance X. Water was used as a solvent. What? Uh, the results of the experiment are shown in the chromatogram below. So it's our solvent front starting line and um, those numbers right there. So this is our starting line. Then these are the distances from the starting line. So you're having substances A, B, and C. And then there's also substance X here, which has, sublim which has been um, dissolved in water to reach this height up there. Question A, uh, which one of the unknown components A, B, C is soluble in water, is insoluble? A is insoluble because it, does not, it hasn't dissolved in any way to move from its spot to climb up to, through this um, uh, fixed uh, media or the, the, the fixed uh, part of the, throughout the paper. Okay, so uh, number, explain your answer okay it did not migrate from the starting line thus did not dissolve that's explanation we've scored a mark there number b which of the known components were was or were not contained in substance x my answer there was a and a and c look a if there was any a here it would have remained here if there was any c it would have been there so we've scored a mark there we need a, uh, to, to give ourselves a hand because we have yeah we have three marks already C, calculate the uh, RF value, okay, the retention factor. RF is for retention factor for component B. Uh, RF value is, is, is equal to distance traveled by component over distance traveled by the solvent front. Therefore, um, distance traveled by component, that's our B, um, that's our B up there. So 28 minus 7, that's the distance traveled by B. So that is 21, okay, 21 centimeters. Okay, uh, the, from there to there it is yeah, 21 centimeters. Up to here it's 28. And then coming down to B, you have to move seven paces. Therefore, that's 21 centimeters. So 21 over 28 gives me 0 0.75. That's our retention factor or RF value. We scored all the five marks. We're bad news. Our next question, which is our, our question B, B3. In an experiment, okay, um, light, I think I should improve on light, but 
just in a while we're going to improve we're going a long way you and me are going a long way so uh, b3 in an, in an experiment to prepare a salt elena reacted three grams of magnesium oxide with 40 cubic centimeters of dilute nitric acid of concentration two moles per decimeter or two molar write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction okay you've got magnesium oxide uh, nitric acid gives me uh, magnesium nitrate and uh, water okay remember to balance the equation appropriately so Number B, calculate the number of moles of magnesium. The formula is here. So magnesium was 3 grams. The atomic number for atomic mass, atomic mass for magnesium, which we get from the periodic table, is 40. Therefore, when you divide, you're going to have uh, the grams will cancel. It's going to be 0 0.075 moles. Okay, that would be our number of moles of code. Three marks already, people. Number 2, B2, dilute nitric acid. The number of moles of dilute nitric acid. Um... We've been given the concentration of the nitric acid, okay, and we've been given the volume. So use this formula, which involves volume and concentration, to find the number of moles. When you multiply volume, convert your volume to decimeters. One decimeter is equals to four, is equals to one thousand cubic centimeters. So we divide this forty by one thousand to give us the decimeters. Then this is already my cubic centimeters. So you simply calculate and the answer is okay, zero point eight moles. Is our answer a answer yes we so number c determine the limiting reagent limiting reagent you already have the moles here the moles there divide the number of moles by the smallest so this is your number of moles of um magnesium number of moles of acid remember to return the decimal places so that you can see numbers or the, the magnitudes so they are great accuracy degrees of accuracy so our limiting reagent is the is the nitric acid Okay, that's right. Our limiting reagent is actually the nitric acid. When you look at this equation here, the balanced equation, one more of this mag of this magnesium oxide requires two moles of the acid. But in our finding the more ratios, dividing by the smallest more ratio here, this is not twice this. This is supposed to be twice this, just like it is twice in the equation there. So our limiting reagent is our 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 nitric acid therefore bang all the six marks have been scored question b4 below shows an uh, elements in the periodic table um yes lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and neon neon so um to which period period of the periodic table do these elements belong that's period two because they all have two electron shells okay again okay. the period number is determined by the number of shells that each uh, element has there they all have two electron shells um therefore um they're from period two number b what happens to the number of shells across the period um what happens to the number of shells across the period shown above uh, my answer is the number of shells remains the same two and they and they get more fueled from lithium uh to neon Okay, I think I've put two phase there. And they get more field. Therefore, the number of electrons increases such that by the time you move from neon to the other element in group one, you would have moved to the third shell, which is the third um, uh, period. Number C, uh, answer the following questions using only the elements shown. Each element can be used once more or more than once or not at all which two elements would be would form an ionic compound lithium and fluorine they would form a four a salt lithium fluoride where lithium loses its electron to fluorine number two which element has a valency of three nitrogen from group five number three which element has isotopes carbon there's carbon uh, 12 carbon 14 and uh, there's also carbon 11 okay carbon 11 so carbon is an example of an element there which has isotopes We've scored five marks, people. B5, a mixture of copper two, copper two oxide powder and cork, which is carbon, was put in a test tube and heated as shown in the diagram below. I'm already thinking about the reactivity series. Carbon is higher than copper in the reactivity series. Therefore, that's a mixture, then tube, then heated, mixture of copper two oxide and carbon powder. So A, describe what happened. What, Describe what would be observed in the mixture as the mixture is heated. Okay, there's no water, by the way, no water. So carbon metal, I mean, copper metal would be liberated and carbon would burn out. 
um, write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction that occurs in the test tube. That is our, our balanced chemical equation right there, where copper is going to be reduced and carbon is going to be oxidized. Then the copper would appear, would start appearing in the test tube as the carbon would reduce as it would be escaping in the form of carbon dioxide, a gas. Number B, what type of reaction between copper to oxide and carbon? Give a reason for your answer. It's a redox reaction because copper is reduced and carbon is oxidized. We have the six marks, people, six marks. Okay, so next question. Um, B6, study the flow um, diagram below and answer questions that follow. That's our flow diagram. You cannot easy. Yeah. It's starting from here, solid P, heated, gives you gas, and gas dissolved in water gives you a solution, meaning this is a soluble substance in water. Um, this solution reacts with uh, sodium hydroxide to give you solution U and water, then gas Q. Okay, um, I have already started this, so let me just go to the answers. Question A is, identify some substances P, Q, and W. P, Q, and W. Um, Q, P, W, this is what is being looked for. This is ammonium chloride. Okay, it's ammonium chloride. Um, ammonium gas is Q. Ammonium gas is Q. Um, my W here is ammonium nitrate. Okay, ammonium nitrate. I'm actually looking at the flow chart there. Um, if you look harder, our gas R should be hydrogen um, chloride. And this is um, ammonia gas, okay, which turns damp, lit mass, damp red lit mass paper to blue. This is hydrogen chloride. Um, this is our solution of uh, ammonium nitrate. Uh, and this is ammonium nitrate because reaction of the aqua solution um, with silver nitrate gives you ammonium nitrate and this X is actually our silver chloride because it's a white pre precipitate silver chloride is insoluble in water so if you just look harder you actually see what I'm I'm seeing as I'm actually speaking slowly I'm seeing um, uh, yeah, a pattern so number B there is a um, uh, write the balance equation for the decomposition of solid P when heated. This is what you get, ammonia and uh, hydrogen chloride. Uh, number two, the reaction between solution T and aqua sodium hydroxide. So this is our ammonium, ammonium chloride plus uh, sodium hydroxide gives me water, ammonia and sodium chloride in aquas. Okay, and uh, just like that we have the five marks. We move on to the next question. Okay, so these questions are A. This is our second last question, which is question 7 in section B. Atoms of element A, B, C um, have 8, 17, and 20 electrons respectively. Okay, uh, using the letters, uh, construct a chemical formula of a compound formed between atoms of elements A and C. You have to think of their electron configurations. If um, A has 8 electrons, I'll, I'll relate it to oxygen. And then um, if C... C has 20 electrons, I'll actually relate it to calcium. Okay, I'll relate it to calcium, which can easily form calcium uh, oxide. And the formula for calcium oxide will actually be just calcium and oxygen, like calcium, oxygen. So it will just be A, uh, I mean CA, with no ratios here, because it's a one-to-one -one kind of combination, ionic combination. Number B, um, element B and C react to form a compound. Okay, B and C, we look at B. Uh, B seems to be 17, should be uh, some kind of halogen, maybe chlorine is the best one. And then C, react to form a compound. C, as we said, it's actually more likely to be calcium. Therefore, calcium chloride will be, is running in my mind. Name the type of bond formed between the two. When you write the configurations of these elements, the type of bond that would result would be an ionic one. State uh, one physical property for this compound. It's non-volatile. Yes, it's not, uh, ionic compounds are non-volatile. Number C, draw the electron structure of the product formed when the atoms of A combine. Remember, A, I said, is more appropriately to be linked. It would be appropriate to link it to oxygen. So the, element, the, the atomic structure that would be formed would be this, a double bond between the two, because that's what um, their electron configurations would demand. Each one is lacking um, 
uh, two electrons to complete this outermost shirt of eight. So number D, give one industry use of element B, water treatment, which is chlorine, water treatment. Six electrons scored, I mean six marks scored. My last question in this section here is um, uh, urea formula, CO, uh, as in brackets there, the ammonia and ammonium nitrate, that's our formula there, are two nitrogenous fertilizers commonly used in, by farmers. Calculate the percentage composition of nitrogen in urea. You have to know the mass of urea as a whole. We did this, I think I did this video just at the beginning of my videos, where you find the mole molar mass, I mean molecular mass or, or formula mass, so you have to know the relative molecular mass or relative formula mass which is key for urea and then you have to number you have to know the mass of nitrogen the mass of nitrogen is 14 on the periodic table and then um um okay i've hit the dead you know a dead end i was about to say 14 but i've removed this 14 here because when i look at this formula there are two nitrogens here these two is multiplying even this nitrogen there are two nitrogens in this formula so the total mass of nitrogen in urea is 28 but on the periodic table is 14. i messed up they have messed up but at least i've corrected it so 28 over skitty times 100 you can find your percentage get your calculator and find the percentage comment below leave your comment on what you found so that's our um, composition of nitrogen in urea by mass number b explain the importance of nitrogenous fertilizers in, in agriculture they are a, they are a supply for nitrogen which is a vital which is vital for protein formation and even in the formation of uh, chlorophyll uh, let's just say amino acids and the like so number c describe the effects of using nitrogenous fertilizers in the environment Excessive usage may lead to eutrophication, which is the, the overgrowth of uh, uh, aquatic plants, which may lead to depletion of oxygen for fish and other bacterial or aquatic organisms when the plants, plant growth becomes excessive due to supply of nitro nitrogen or maybe remains of nitrogenous fertilizers. Um, emission of nitrous oxide, yes. Uh, soil acidification went too much, yes, and leaching of the underground water, therefore leaching in terms of nutrients being um, um, uh, washed. Um, D, apart from nitrogen, name an, ele an element needed for root development, that's phosphorus, uh, seed for formation, that's potassium. Potassium, hey, that is just, that's actually biology biology and chemistry so we've scored about seven marks here and um, this ends or marks the end of our section b we'll meet or i'll, I'll meet you as um uh, look out for the um the the, the, the calculations or this the solutions to section c of the 2020 science paper paper 2 5124 uh thanks for watching and um remember to find the answer for this one here bye bye